This video will introduce you to the Plurex catheter system, designed for the management of recurrent pleural effusions. The Plurex catheter system includes a drainage catheter and active vacuum bottles that collect fluid. Since its introduction in 1997, the Plurex system has provided relief to more than 300,000 patients. The efficacy and safety of the Plurex catheter is documented in more than 30 clinical articles published in nationally recognized peer-reviewed journals. The Plurex pleural catheter system is indicated for the intermittent long-term drainage of symptomatic recurrent pleural effusions, including malignant pleural effusions and other recurrent effusions that do not respond to the medical management of the underlying disease. The system is indicated for the palliation of dyspnea due to pleural effusion and providing pleurodesis, or resolution of the pleural effusion. The Plurex catheter can be used instead of a chest tube to deliver talc slurry or bleomycin as an outpatient procedure. In clinical studies, infection rates are documented at less than 3% and occlusion rates are documented at less than 5%. Compliance and clinical acceptance of the Plurex catheter was extremely high among patients. The Plurex catheter system includes the items necessary for catheter placement and the initial drainage with wall or portable suction. You can also purchase the Plurex catheter and starter kit together in one convenient kit. One order gets you everything you and your patient need to get started. The Plurex pleural catheter is a fenestrated 15.5 French silicone catheter measuring 66 centimeters in length. A 1.8 millimeter barium strip runs the entire length of the catheter and is visible under radiography. The catheter valve is designed to prevent the passage of air or fluid in either direction unless it is accessed with a Plurex drainage line, access kit, or Plurex vacuum bottles. The primary valve keeps the catheter closed when the patient is not draining. The secondary valve provides a backup seal around the access tip when the patient is draining. When the valve and access tip mate, the primary and secondary valves are forced open. When mated, the access tip creates a channel through the entire valve, allowing any debris in the patient's fluid to flow directly into the drainage tube without clogging or getting caught in the valve. Do not put anything except the access tip of the Plurex lockable drainage line, Plurex catheter access kit, or Plurex vacuum bottles into the Plurex catheter valve. Other devices could damage the valve. A damaged valve may allow air into the body or let fluid leak out through the valve when not draining. The polyester cuff on the Plurex catheter helps to secure the catheter in place and may promote tissue in growth to help reduce infection risk. 30 fenestrations along with the indwelling portion of the catheter promote drainage and help avoid occlusions. Following is the suggested procedure for placement of the Plurex pleural catheter. For more detail, including cautions and warnings associated with this procedure, see the instructions for use provided with the Plurex pleural catheter kit. The procedure for pleural placement can be performed in an inpatient or outpatient procedure room with or without sedation based on the patient's individual needs. Sterile techniques should be used when placing the catheter. Proper medical and surgical procedures are the responsibility of the physician. The appropriateness of any procedure must be based upon the needs of the patient. Identify the appropriate intercostal space for guide wire placement and position the patient to access the desired guide wire insertion site. The guide wire is typically placed in the sixth or seventh intercostal space. Ultrasound can be used to confirm the guide wire insertion site. Identify the location of the catheter exit site, typically five centimeters from the guide wire insertion site. Remember to consider the patient's ease of access in determining the location of the catheter exit site. While some patients have a caregiver to assist with drainage, others perform the drainage procedure on their own. Take patient size, tunnel length, and the catheter length into account when placing the catheter. Surgically prep both sites utilizing the orange tint Chlora Prep applicators provided in the tray. Place the fenestrated drape so that the opening is located over the plant insertion, exit, and tunneling sites. Use the filter straw to aspirate lidocaine solution into a syringe. Attach the 25 gauge needle to the syringe and raise a skin wheel. 
Aspirate additional lidocaine into the syringe and use the 22 gauge needle to complete infiltration of the access site and tunnel track. Insert the guide wire introducer with needle attached to a syringe through the desired intercostal space and just over the lower rib. Ensure free aspiration of pleural fluid, then remove the needle and syringe, leaving the guide wire introducer in place. Insert the guide wire through the introducer, advancing it well into the pleural cavity. Remove the introducer, leaving the guide wire in place. Make a 1 cm incision at the guide wire insertion site. Make a second 1 to 2 cm incision at the catheter exit site. A smaller incision may provide better security for the catheter. The fenestrated end of the catheter may be cut shorter depending on an individual patient's anatomy. If desired, cut a portion of the fenestrated end of the catheter by using a scalpel to make a straight cut between fenestrations. Leave at least one fenestration on the catheter. Attach the fenestrated end of the catheter onto the tunneler. Pass the tunneler and catheter subcutaneously from the second incision up to and out through the first incision at the guide wire insertion site. Continue to draw the catheter through the tunnel until the polyester cuff lies inside the tunnel, about one centimeter from the second incision. If the cuff is advanced further into the tunnel, it can make removal of the catheter difficult. Disconnect the tunneler from the catheter. Dilate the insertion site over the guide wire utilizing the 12 French dilator. Thread the 16 French peel away introducer over the guide wire into the pleural cavity. Remove the guide wire and dilator as a unit from the sheath. Leave the sheath in place. Place a thumb over the end of the sheath as the dilator is removed to avoid air entering the pleural cavity. Care must be taken not to bend or kink the sheath as damage to the sheath may prevent passage of the catheter. Insert the fenestrated end of the catheter into the sheath, advancing it until all the fenestrations are within the pleural cavity. This can be verified under fluoroscopy as fenestrations are located along the barium sulfate stripe. The fenestrations must be entirely within the pleural space to avoid leakage into the tunnel tract. After the catheter has been positioned, crack the sheath handle in half and peel away the sheath while ensuring the catheter remains in place. Adjust the catheter so that it lies flat in the tunnel without any kinks. Do not use forceps on the introducer to break the handle and or peel the sheath. Close the incision at the guide wire insertion site. Close the incision site around the catheter. The polyester cuff of the Plurex catheter helps to secure the catheter in place and may promote tissue ingrowth to help reduce infection risk. Exercise care when placing ligatures to avoid cutting or occluding the catheter. With the catheter placed, perform the initial drainage before applying the wound dressing. To use wall suction and the Plurex lockable drainage line, first close the roller clamp on the drainage line by rolling the wheel toward the suction source. The roller clamp must be completely closed to occlude the drainage line. Attach the 5-in-1 adapter to the lure fitting on the end of the drainage line. Then, attach the drainage line to the suction source. Wall suction must be regulated to no more than negative 60 centimeters of water, 
set to drain at no more than 400 milliliters of fluid per minute or no more than negative 44 milliliters of mercury. Remove and discard the protected cover from the access tip of the drainage line. Insert the access tip into the catheter valve. You will feel and hear a click when the access tip and the valve are securely connected. You can lock the access tip to the catheter valve by twisting the access tip until you feel and hear a second click. To begin drainage, roll the wheel on the roller clamp away from the suction source. When drainage is complete, close the roller clamp and disconnect the drainage line from the catheter. Re-expansion pulmonary edema may occur if too much fluid is removed too rapidly. Therefore, it is recommended to limit the initial drainage to no more than 1,500 milliliters of fluid. The volume of pleural fluid removed should be based on the patient's individual status. After draining, clean the catheter valve with an alcohol pad. Attach the valve cap to the catheter valve by holding the catheter valve at the base and placing the cap over the catheter valve and twisting clockwise until it snaps into its locked position. Finally, apply the dressing over the catheter. First, place the foam pad around the catheter. Wind the catheter in loops and place it on top of the foam pad. Place the gauze pads over the catheter. Hold the self-adhesive dressing and remove and discard the center panel from the backing. Peel the printed liner from the dressing, exposing the adhesive surface. Center the dressing over the gauze pads and press it down. Do not stretch the dressing during application. Slowly remove the frame while smoothing down the edges using firm pressure to ensure adhesion. This is the suggested procedure for placement of the Plurex Pleural Catheter. For more detail, including cautions and warnings associated with this procedure, see the instructions for use provided with the Plurex Pleural Catheter Kit.